the, the Sac Joaquin section is effectively dark. Um, if, a, if a school is able to play because their county health official allows them to and their school administration says you can go ahead and go play some basketball games or baseball or whatever, just like during the summer, they can have summer league, but during the fall, you can play baseball, you can play basketball, golf, tennis, obviously, um, everything except for tackle football. Um, tackle football is not allowed except during the season of sport by California Ed Code. These, these, are, these, are, these are state laws that don't allow tackle football, schools to play tackle football at any time. So tackle football remain the same, but what schools do during the summer uh, for football, and you've all seen it, is seven on seven. That's, that'll be perfectly fine. That'll be allowed. So our schools that are a little bit fired up that we are waiting until January to start, um, they, are, they have been given the option if their county health officials allow it and if their school administration allows it, they can play. And that's, that's perfectly fine by us. They can, they can go do their own thing. Um, our dead periods have been eliminated. I don't know if that interests you, the media, all that much necessarily, but it certainly interests our coaches. Uh, we have usually a two week stretch before the season begins and after the season ends where coaches and kids cannot have any contact with each other. Um, those, those, have been, those have been eliminated. We've also eliminated bylaw 600. Bylaw 600 is a rule that says when you are playing for your high school team, you are not allowed to play for your club team at the same time. Um, because our calendar is totally different from, from what it normally is. A lot of, a lot of our clubs, we kind of have a, um, I guess for lack of a different word, we kind of have a, uh, an uneasy truce with club sports. Um, you know, a lot of kids play club sports and that's perfectly fine. We, we have zero problems with that. We don't allow, we, we normally don't allow club, club events, club sports to happen during the high school season, but they can do it the other nine months out of the year. Clubs have generally adjusted their schedules so that, so that, they, don't, so that they don't conflict with the high school season. Well, that's kind of out the window this year, so we've chosen to waive by last 600. So a kid could play for their club and the high school team at the same time. Um, number of allowable contacts, again, the regular season really isn't changing much. You, some sports are maybe losing a week. So uh, we're not changing the number of allowable contacts. It still remains 28. Um, transfer eligibility changes are pretty minor. Um, we certainly have heard uh, cases where somebody is gonna send their kid to another, to another state and then bring said kid back. If those are not full family moves, they will have problems getting eligible when they come back. Um, and, and again, I, I probably have to get into specifics on, on a lot of this stuff as far as what constitutes a full family move and what doesn't. But, uh, but in generally speaking, if a family stays here in California, sends their kid to another state where they play, and then come back the following year, they're definitely going to have eligibility problems. Um, Beyond football, I do not foresee many other, if any, if, if any other changes, at least at this time, that could easily change. I mean, th these calendars we put together starting in January, uh, January for, the, for, for season one and, and season two beginning in March, um, we don't know if we're going to be able to play in January. So, so we could easily be having more media zooms like this down the road as we start pushing things back. And we certainly have seen it in other states. Some states like New Mexico have chosen to do basically what California has done. There are other states, Michigan, Ohio, um, North Dakota, I think just announced it uh, today as well, that they're basically starting on time. Well, they're starting on time if they can. And, and if they can't, what they're gonna do is push things back two weeks, push things back two weeks and continue that. We just kind of felt, we the CIF felt that that was putting too much pressure on our athletic directors to continue drawing up schedules if possible. And we felt like January gave, uh, we, we felt like January gave, um, gave our athletic directors the best and our, and our schools the best chance to put a schedule together that actually could be followed and that actually worked. Um, and really the last thing, 
and this is of interest to some of you, I'm sure, but uh, um, realignment, our, this is a realignment year for us. We have realignment meetings that begin normally in January and they will run through March. Um, those realignment meetings, we are currently planning on starting realignment in October and running through, running through probably January. We do not know how those meetings are gonna look. Um, it could be Zoom meetings, it could be something in a gym where we're social distancing. For, for all we know, by October, things may be a little bit better and we may, we may have the normal organized chaos that is a realignment meeting. And, and if you haven't been to one, they always are. Um, that's, that's pretty much what I got, except for, I know there are a lot of questions from you. Um, you can you can raise your hand and I'll 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 call on you. We can do this school way, or if you just have a question and you're unmuted, go ahead and fire away, and and I'll 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 answer you, I'll answer everything that I possibly can. I like it. Oh, go ahead, guy. Sorry, I can't. I just, I can't hear you, guy. Are you unmuted now? Mute. There we go. These computer things. Um, should sports return in the winter? Hypothetically, you've got volleyball played indoors, football played outdoors. But what's the uh, fan situation going to be like? And also, what's the? Are schools going to be required to do any um, any testing of students or safety precautions, or is it going to be? business as usual. So yeah, what's the, the safety precautions and then also the fan situation going to be like? Sure. Um, safety precautions is going to be a school that that's, that's strictly a school issue. I mean, we, we have, we have 16 different counties in this, in, in this, the Sac Joaquin section and some counties by then may very well be, be wide open and be completely ready to go and others and others may not be. Um, so the schools are going to have to work with county health officials as far as what they're going to do there regarding testing or what have you. As far as fans go, we're kind of of the take, um, and <laughs> it, this may change by January, but we're of the take. We, the, the, the state of California and really us as, as a country, we've always protected our kids, maybe a little more so than we protected our adults. If we are saying it is okay for our kids to play a sport like tackle football and not have to distance, my anticipation is there won't be any fan restrictions. Um, that if if kids can do it, why can't adults do it? Why can't adults uh, ultimately make that choice to do it? So I, I I don't foresee any issues there. But we may hit January and and we're going to be told by either the state of California or county health officials you can play sports, but you need to do this, this, and this. We're going to do this, 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 and this. We kind of want things to get back to normal for the kids if we possibly can. I see you, Scott, and I'm looking for you on here. You should be able to talk, Scott. Yes. Um, thank you, Will. <laughs> um, is there a, have you made a decision on whether you're playing the seasons all the way through to state championships? I know, like, at the JC level, they are not going to do state titles to move things along and stop at league or regional titles. Are they going to be just section titles? Are you going to go all the way through? Uh, we're going to go all the way through, sort of. Um, the state postseason for each sport that we have a state or regional championship is going to be one week long. So, so basketball, I think it's currently three weeks. Um, so basketball in its current state is not going to be happening. What I, I haven't heard anything for certain, but what I envision is it's going to be something along the lines of regional games for football with only one week. It's probably going to be regional bowl games for basketball. Uh, similar to us in football, you're probably going to have a bunch of, you know, a bunch of 18 brackets probably playing for most likely regional championships, maybe a handful of state championships. Um, certainly, I, I, I can see in football, for instance, I can see a lot of NorCal and SoCal regional games, um, but they always have that one open championship, which is, for, for us, it's been De La Salle versus either Modern Day or Centennial or, um, or St. John Bosco. Um, I, don't see why that, that, I don't see why that couldn't happen as well. Um, but, but 
all state postseason will be one week. So you got to figure a maximum of probably three games there. That kind of answers it. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yep. Yep, go ahead, Nick. Are you, do you guys have any, like, restrictions as far as multi-sport athletes go? I know there's probably going to be some – uh, you know, during the spring season, or is that just kind of up to the schools or up to the athletes themselves? Uh, we, we don't have a rule about multi-sport athletes. And, and back in the day when, when boys soccer was in the fall, we certainly saw a lot of soccer players um, playing football uh, or, or, or at least kicking for the football team. But uh, we don't have any rules about that. And honestly, I got to think most schools don't have a rule about that as well. I think it's just a matter of do you have time to do it? And, and are you able to do it? Uh, I'm guessing practices are going to be pretty interesting in that sense. But, but that in, in our all school zoom, that was definitely brought up by our smaller schools and no question. It's a, it's, it's an issue for, for, for small schools when you share athletes. I mean, any of you, any of you who see me, I'm this, I'm this gangly looking guy and I was a three sport athlete at my small school. And if my small school had to use me for three different sports, you know, they were kind of hurting. So, so I think that, uh, I, I think that's going to be the case for a lot of schools. You may see levels, you, you, you may see, you know, they may not have three levels of basketball, it may only be two levels of basketball. Uh, ultimately, this is a really weird hand that we've all been dealt and we're trying to, we're, we're, we're trying to make do and we're trying to make things as, as, as normal as we possibly can. But uh um, but let's, let's be honest, it's not going to be totally normal. We're just kind of hopeful we can get back to, to playing some sports. Kid, kid is a three sport athlete. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I think three, I, I think you'd have to be a pretty special kid to be playing three sports this year because two sports, at least two of those sports are going to be happening at the exact same time. Thanks. All right, John Amar, let me, uh. I kind of want to just unmute everybody. All right. Can you hear me? Here we go. Yeah. Um, so how would it work for uh, sports like golf and tennis where you're combining both genders together when um, you have so, so few facilities for them to share? How would you envision that working? <laughs> um, that, that is why our ADs get paid so much, John Amar. I'm, I'm, I'm joking about that. But uh, um, so, so that, that was a problem that kind of – kind of came up that became a lot more of a problem for us, the Sac Joaquin section in the last week. Um, we were kind of anticipating potentially having girls golf and girls tennis in the fall. Um, and then just in the last few days, pretty much all of our schools have gone to distance learning and, and you realize it's just, it's, it's just not going to be feasible. If schools aren't in session, we certainly aren't going to have them playing sports. So we had to move it. Um, golf and tennis don't do the winter. They, they just don't do the winter very well. So, so it was, it was kind of a situation where they, they were kind of forced there. Um, I don't think that's necessarily ideal. Um, and, it, and, and, and something else, something else there is going to be coaches. Um, there's a lot of coaches who coach boys and girls. Um, we really don't have a problem if they're practicing together. We, we do have a rule against that, but that's going to be one of those rules we're going to turn a blind eye to this year. Uh, if the golf teams are all out there practicing together, that's perfectly fine. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think that's going to be, it's probably going to be more of an issue for the golfers than the tennis players, because uh, anybody who's been golfing now, the golf courses are pretty full. Uh, it's one of the few things we're able to do. And, um, and, 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 and I think that is, that is going to be a bit of a challenge. People are probably going to have to be a little creative there as far as like when they play and, and, and that sort of thing. I am not seeing any raised hands and I'm not seeing anybody else asking any questions. So speak now or forever hold your peace. Oh, go ahead, Guy. Do you think, because um, I spoke with um, someone regarding trying to put, instead of having three individual seasons, you're having the two, and he wasn't overly excited about it because of the sharing of players. Do you think the CIF made the best decision, that that was the best decision of having two seasons instead of having three designated ones? It, I, I guess that really depends who you talk to. I'm sure there are people out there who think 
this was a better call. And I'm certain there, are, I, I know there are people out there who wanted to go like the three, the three compacted seasons. And, and we're certainly hearing from that second faction right now from our schools, uh, the, the schools that are happy, they aren't really talking, but uh, me, me personally, seeing what the three season, seeing what the three season model looked like, um, it was basically, th there's about, I want to say 28 weeks from January to June. And we had something along, it, it might even be fewer weeks than that. It might be like 26. Um, and if you, if you have three, if you have three seasons of 12 or even 10 weeks each, the overlap is so heavy that kids were not going to be able to play fall to winter or winter to spring as it is, or they were going to be joining midway through. And the, Again, right or wrong, the philosophy kind of became there. Let's try to make our seasons normal, as normal as possible, as, as normal length as possible with, with the idea that, yeah, kids probably aren't, aren't going to be easily able to play three sports. But in answer to your question, I, 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 I work for the CIF. I kind of like what the CIF, but, but, I, but I do kind of like what the CIF did. Um, uh, I, I think they took a they they took a a bad situation and made it as normal for most kids as possible. Um, but again, small schools are going to be upset. Multi sports multi sport kids are going to be upset. Um, I look at the alternative, and I think we would have been getting a, a, at least the same amount of complaints, if not more, from people going, "How do you expect me to How do you expect me to play basketball when when football when when basketball starting in football week six, which is which is about what it would have been." Good job, Will. Nick, was that a raised hand? Or are you all good? Yeah. Um, there's already – I've seen a couple people pose this question on, on Twitter and stuff about uh, officials, uh, you mm -hmm. know, and, like, there's already a kind of a shortage of them as it is right now. And with everything being crammed into the same season, like, how do you anticipate that issue kind of playing out? Um, we, we've talked with our officials organizations and at least at the moment they are telling us they feel they can cover for it. Now, July 20th, we may have enough officials to do that. Come spring when half of your baseball, half of your baseball games just got rained out and you're trying to reschedule on the same date as, as when, when everything else is going on, you know, that's, that's probably going to be a little tough. Uh, we, we go with what our officials organizations are telling us and they're telling us they can handle this at least right now. Um, and they have at least six months to kind of, uh, to kind of bolster their, bolster their ranks, I guess. Um, one thing we do to kind of mitigate that a little bit is we were, we have mandated league league games for all of our leagues. Um, we require league games for certain sports to be played on certain dates. And we do that to split up the split up the officials 50 50. So the uh, the mother load league, they may be playing baseball on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but the uh, the 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 SJAA, which is kind of close to the mother load league, they're only allowed to play baseball on Tuesday, Thursday, it, it, it allows it allows the officials to be spread out a little bit more in that sense. Non league is obviously you can play whenever you want, but but mandated league league dates have definitely helped us in that sense. That being said, this is going to be a weird year. Um, there are there. I'm sure there are teams and programs out there who are used to having three man basketball crews that are probably going to be two man basketball crews or even one man, uh, you know, so, something like that. I, I definitely foresee fewer officials at certain events and, and certainly lower level, but, uh, but at least right now they're telling us they can handle it. So, so we're going with that until they tell us different. Yes, guy. Uh, hypothetically come, you know, December things or January numbers of, of COVID cases continue to rise, but like in, for the Muslim league schools, Tuolumne County, Calaveras County, Amador County, there hasn't been a death. Now there, there are cases, but no deaths compared to Stanislaus County and, and Merced. So, if the if if the can the section step in and say, okay, these counties can no longer play because of the because of the the infections or death, but these counties can and they have to rearrange their schedules, or is it going to be all for one and one for all type of thing? 
It's definitely not going to be all for one, one for all. I mean, we may have a situation where 60% of our schools are able to go in January. We would go. Um, now, again, massive moving parts for our athletic directors there. I mean, if, if you run into any ADs, thank an AD because that is a fairly thankless job. And, and, and we will probably have situations, let's say we get going and, and a team, uh, a, a team as a kid get diagnosed and they have to go into quarantine. Well, that's, that's going to mess with three different schedules. It's going to mess with the two schools that are playing right there. Plus that team that just went into quarantine, they're not playing next week either. Um, so there's going to be a lot of scrambling in that sense. But as far as we're concerned, if, if schools are able to play, then, then we're going. Um, now, if 10% of our schools are able to play, then that, 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 that's something we kind of have to look at down the road. But honestly, I think, uh, I, I, I don't think that's a decision that's necessarily going to be made by us. I think we're either going to have quite a few of our counties are going to be up and running or they won't. And if they won't, if, if we know we're not going to be going as of January, we're going to push things back. And that's where pushing things back and, and even potential season cancellations kind of come into play. Um, it's just like, it's kind of just like when this all when this all started in March, uh, when you know state basketball was canceled, um, our spring was impacted. And honestly, me personally, I thought, okay, we're gonna we're gonna sit out for a couple of weeks and then we're gonna get going. And we'll be and then and then after a couple of weeks, it was like, okay, we'll be ready by spring break. And then it wasn't spring break. And then I distinctly remember at one point drawing up this like month long schedule where it was like, okay, we're doing league only. We're gonna have to do a bunch of games, and that's how it's gonna go. And that didn't happen. And here we are in fall. And really 2021, the entire year is kind of, it's, it's certainly not as concrete going to happen as we all would like to think. Um, so so uh, that, that's kind of a bridge that we'll cross when we get there. But, but I, think, I think if the majority of our schools are able to go come January, we're going to be going. We'll go. Yep. Go ahead, Jim. Hey, well, you mentioned the officials, you know, say that they can handle it, you know, when it comes playoffs and stuff about, you know, section representatives being at all the events. Do you guys have enough folks to, you know, in case, you know, something that goes on or there's any kind of dispute or anything that needs to be kind of translated, et cetera? Don't ask me to officiate a basketball game because everybody, everybody's a charge or everybody's a block. I can't remember which, but, uh, um, but <laughs> I think, uh, I, I think we'll, I think the chances are pretty good that we will have tournament directors at a lot of our events. And, and, um, as you guys all have, a lot of these people all have my cell number and, and I get, I get calls, <laughs> I get calls almost, uh, almost on a weekly basis because something happened at a game. And I think it's going to be a lot of that. I think, again, that's, that's where we, that's where we adjust as well. Um, you know, there's only a handful of us in the office, so we won't be everywhere, but I know I'll definitely be at wrestling. Um, I know all of us will be at our basketball championships. Um, uh, but beyond that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I mean, I'm kind of curious, like everybody else, I'm kind of curious to see how this all works out. Um, and that's probably not a good thing to be saying when you're working in the section office, but it's, it's the honest truth. We just don't know what things are going to look like going down the road. And, and we're just kind of hopeful that we get back to a little bit of a sense of normalcy. Cool. Okay. Thanks. All right. I'm not seeing anything else. So, uh, yeah, one last one. Oh, you don't mind. Oh, sure. Go ahead, guy. Um, do you think there's more pressure put on, the CIF in general to make sure we do have a season this year? Because if we go, you know, no spring season of last year and then a full year of no sports, especially small schools, that could kill a lot of athletics in small schools just by losing interest. Last year, Brad Hart started the season with 17 football players. Yeah. And a, a year off could, could really kill a lot of programs. So do you think there's extra pressure on the CIF to make sure that at least something goes so – schools don't lose interest and say, hey, we can still survive without sports, so why do we need them? Um, I'm only semi-joking here when I say a year off could kill the Sac Joaquin section. So, uh, so we're, we're definitely fans of, of, of having sports for sure. But uh, um, I think we are going to do everything humanly possible to, to have sports this year. And the only way we're not going to have the, – the only way we're going to have absolutely zero sports is if – 
things are things are so rough that we just can't. Um, as soon as there is any sort of window that opens up, especially starting in January, we're gonna we're gonna start doing stuff, and 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 our schools certainly are as well. Um, you know, I'm I'm involved here at the Sac Joaquin section. I and I and I was one of you guys. I was a high school sports writer uh, before that, and before that, I was a high school athlete. And I know how important high school sports are. It isn't just playing a sport. You're representing your school. You there's lessons learned on fields of play that are tough to sometimes learn in the classroom. And I think that's part of your education. I think, I, I, I think sports are absolutely an important part of, of, of everybody's education. And we're gonna do everything humanly possible. So, so I guess the answer to your question is yes, we're, we, we feel the pressure, we want to have them, and we're gonna do everything possible to have them. Even if it means somewhere well down the road, okay, just go play if you can go play. That's that's fine. I mean, it, it's not necessarily the structure of a section postseason or a state postseason or even league play. Um, but but I think kids getting out there and being able to play. Um, I, again, I was a three sport athlete who played. Uh, you know, I wasn't necessarily on three good. Any of those teams were all that good. I was on Houston Heights' very first soccer team ever, and I think we scored like eight goals the entire year. Uh, but I have friends that I remember from, from those, from those teams that I'm still in touch with 30 years later. And, and, and there are things I certainly learned out there that, that I, I probably wouldn't have learned in my English class. Not, not that the English class wasn't important. It got to me, it got me to where I was today, but, but these are all, these are all part of a well-rounded education. And I, I think, I think sports are, are, we're, we're going to do all everything we possibly can to have them.